Welcome back to Money for Breakfast Weekend. I'm Alexis Glick, joined by Chris Cotter on this special holiday edition of Money for Breakfast. Happy July 4th weekend. The economy is showing signs of life as the Obama administration hits the six-month mark of trying to pull the U.S. out of the recession. Unemployment is over 9 percent, but the hemorrhaging of job losses has slowed. Consumer confidence, meanwhile, is at its highest level since February of last year. And according to the Wall Street Journal, Wall Street is set to log its best quarter since the beginning of the credit crisis. So is America headed in the right direction? We're joined this morning by Chris Gardner, author of Start Where You Are and CEO of Christopher Gardner International Holdings. John Drummond is the president of Banjo.com and Unicycle.com. And Poppy King is the lipstick queen. <laughs> and you can see that gorgeous lipstick on her right now. Good morning, everybody. Happy July 4th. Thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, John, Thank let you. me start with you. You had this really long and storied career at IBM in addition to your father, and then you went out and said, I'm going to start a unicycle business. Most people don't wake up every day and do that. How did you do it? <laughs> well, I had ridden as a kid, and uh, I rode from like age 12 to 16 and then put it away when I got my driver's license. You can't pick up a date on a unicycle, oh. obviously. <laughs> But uh, f fast forward, uh, when I hit age 40, I had gained a pound a year for every year since high school. And I wanted to do something to lose weight. So I, I started riding a little bit and then got, got a little further every day. And uh, I noticed online that there were other people that were doing the same thing. And uh, I noticed there wasn't anybody really serving that market. So at the same time, while I was working for IBM, they came out with this program called Homepage Creator. They helped me build a website that actually got me out of my job. <laughs> You know, Ooh. oh, look at that. You know, Chris, you and I have talked a lot about, obviously, your American dream story is one that most people in this country know a lot about. How do you pursue the American dream, especially when things are as challenging as they are right now? First of all, I honestly believe you got to forget about challenges, forget about this environment, and choose to do something you're truly passionate about. Mm -hmm. Just listening to the young man earlier talk about creating the unicycle business. That's something he felt strongly and passionate about. This is that time. You know, Poppy, you're, you're shaking your head. You <laughs> left shaking my head, yes. Yes, yes, you agree. <laughs> you left your job in corporate America, terrific job, yes. to go start your own business. Why'd you do it? How'd you get the confidence to do it? Well, because I was living in America, I, as you can hear, I'm originally from Australia, but I came over to America to be part of corporate America. I never intended to actually go back to being an entrepreneur, but the American dream is about ingenuity. And unfortunately, I think a lot of corporations have trouble maintaining ingenuity. And so when I came here and I realized how open this country is to people with good ideas and passion, people that are passionate about things, there's very very few societies and consumer markets around the west of the world that I've experienced where passion can take you so far as it can in America. So I just couldn't help but go back to being an entrepreneur here. It's interesting, Poppy. I was noticing in some of your comments uh, when we were talking earlier yes. that you said there's a difference between the entry point into creating your own business in the United States versus Europe, but there's also a difference in how much that customer is willing to stay with you. Absolutely. See, the thing about the American market is, and I think it's uh, the customers here and consumers here are so often underrated and underestimated in how smart they are with their choices, how much power the customer has. And I think when you see something like a company like General Motors, such a be behemoth, fall ultimately because of not for years and years listening to the customer, the thing with the American consumer is that they are so open, they are willing to believe, but you cannot fool them. And that's a challenge that entrepreneurs absolutely relish. I don't think sometimes it's a challenge that corporations relish, but entrepreneurs, and that's what I absolutely adore about the American customer, that inspired me. Frankly, I had a very difficult time of my business in Australia. I never, ever anticipated being entrepreneurial again. I thought, I'm done with that. It was the customer in America and their willingness and openness to new ideas that inspired me back. That customer, John, in your case, took what you thought was going to kind of be a hobby on the side while you were at IBM <laughs> and, and, and turned it into a multi-million dollar business. And oh, by the way, you said, let me start a banjo business at the same time. What gave you the wherewithal, the know-how to say, these are viable businesses that I can support my family with? 
I have to be honest with you, I had no idea that we could sell enough unicycles to support us. I thought it was just going to be a hobby business. In fact, um, after the first month, I think we did a thousand in sales. I just wanted to get enough money that I could go to Amy and say, hey, I want to buy a new unicycle, and she wouldn't give me a hard time about it. <laughs> but the second month, we hit... The second month we hit 9,000 in sales, and that's when I said, you know, if we could sell 30 unicycles a month consistently, we could buy a new car. And her car was dying, mm. and we needed one. So mm. um, that it just it grew from there. Chris, it, it replaced my salary in seven months. <laughs> wow. Mm. I, I love these shots of John on the unicycle. I, I need to get some lessons at a later <laughs> date. Um, but, uh, but, Chris, you give advice to people, particularly in this environment. A lot of people say the administration's not doing enough for small businesses since they are the biggest job creator in the country. What do we need to do? What advice do you want to give people out there about how they can go out and achieve it? I think one of the things that all of us small business people have accepted is that uh, something I've talked a great deal about is, look, the cavalry is not coming. We must continue to do and grow and see for ourselves the future that we want to create. Uh, I, myself, and a lot of other small business people that I'm very familiar with, we're not waiting for the cavalry to come. We're continuing to go forward on our own. And Poppy, that creates opportunity for people like you. Absolutely. I think now is an amazing time because the focus is on people's imagination versus their aspiration. And when you have a consumer market where people are looking to be inspired versus aspiring to status seeking, there's an amazing opportunity. It, it's funny. I, I, I want to grab this. <laughs> Lessons of a <laughs> lipstick queen. queen. And I probably haven't properly said what it is that Poppy does, but I was saying to her, her lipstick business, yeah. the beautiful red. Um, you sell it in major department stores, but you also appear on QVC. And during the, during the break, I said to you, what percentage of your profits come from each? I mean, mm. I assume QVC opened a lot of doors for you. How'd you get in that door? Well, QVC is amazing. And I have to tell you, talking about the American dream, I mean, QVC embodies it in the sense that it's a platform where everyone has a go, but ultimately the consumer decides who's going to be successful because that's all about authenticity on that channel. It's how mm. authentic you are to what you're saying. And so getting into QVC is something that really you have to have a story. This is not about marketing muscle or advertising dollars. This is about having a story. Mm. And I think this is a land and a country about stories. And now is a time when people want to hear stories, real stories. John, I don't want to end it on a negative note, but I also don't want us to sound a little too rosy about it. It's a challenge to own a small business and it's a challenging environment to get access to credit. You've seen that with one of your other businesses. What do you do in the face of that challenge? You know, we tried to hit, the, we saw the first downturn in sales on our banjo side in August of 07. And so we were in the back of a little industrial park. And so I thought, let's hit this head on. We're going to raise awareness and move into a major shopping mall. So, you know, I felt like I didn't want to just sit still. I wanted to try something different. And we, uh, Christmas was a blockbuster. And I even, I had high hopes of putting a banjo.com in every mall in the country. You know, I was pretty optimistic. But uh, January came and sales fell and we held on for eight months and finally moved out. And uh, it was a really tough time because I was working way too many hours. But, you know, I, I still feel good that we at least tried that. And so once I found out that's not going to work, <clears throat> then I'll pull back and try something else. And so we've just changed our strategy and we're actually on the comeback now. Well, that is a great example. you got to be willing to adapt and change with the times. All three of you, Chris, John, and Poppy, great inspiring stories. And as I mentioned, Lessons of a Lipstick Queen and Chris Gardner, of course, the Start Where You Are author. You can get both books, of course, online and in bookstores. Terrific having you guys. Thanks. And have